I've always been involved in galleries through art school. So I went to Newcastle Art School and I was always helping out um, putting on exhibitions there. And then when I went to university, I was a Wattspace assistant. Then I worked at Podspace Gallery. And then when that gallery closed, I went and did volunteering for Newcastle Art Space. Because I've worked and exhibited in Newcastle for so long, I've built up a real network of artists and people who work in the, the same art community. My art practice started in photography and printmaking. And then when I went to university, it moved into textiles because I was around my mother a lot, who does lots of textiles. And it's moved on into painting and a little bit of sculpture. And it's always been abstract, just looking at surfaces and textures. The gallery was established four years ago and I kind of modelled it on the artist-run galleries that I've worked at. So artists still needed to pay a certain um, artist fee or rent. And then there was also 30% commission for any artwork sold. And I, I did it that way because like in, a, in an artist run space where the artists have to sit there and look after all the exhibition and they have to do all the promotion and all the other things that come with a, a gallery like openings and, and things like that, I looked after it. And so that's how I think I was able to keep a bit of a, a control over what was happening in the gallery and how Gallery 139 was seen by the outside community. I established Gallery 139, one of the main reasons was because I really love curating. And um, I'd done many curating shows in the past at artist run spaces and I just wanted to have more opportunity to put shows together and that's what I did at Gallery 139. The first artist I asked to be one of my Gallery 139 artists was Helene Lean, who's a printmaker and painter. And I asked her because I love her work, of course, and admire her, her, very, her very unique printmaking techniques that she has, the gouache monotypes, and also because I love working with Helene. She's always willing to help out. She's always organised. She was excited I was starting a new gallery. I would exhibited her within other exhibitions I had in the past. All the gallery artists have been asked because they're established in Newcastle and what the gallery is trying to do with the gallery artists is move them from Newcastle and out. I try to keep a, it even too between male and female artists. I started Independent Galleries Newcastle in um, the second year of having Gallery 139 because I had lots of visitors coming in and asking where they could see more art and I would give them the invites that I had from the different galleries and I thought if this is there's too much paperwork going on why it would be better if we just had one guy that we could just give someone then they paid to be involved and I did some the social media and the website and then from that uh, we decided that wouldn't it be great if we could go and take them to the different galleries. I think I just saw an ad about the, the tram and so I rang up the guy that runs the tram, Chris, and asked him would he be interested if we hired the tram and he drove and take us to the different galleries. And that's how the Newcastle's famous train tram got involved. I've liked to have exhibitions outside of the gallery and for me, that's another place that I get to curate exhibitions in different spaces. So I've um, gone to the University Gallery and then I've gone to Sydney at the Depot and I've gone to other artist-run spaces in, in Sydney.
it's just a good opportunity for artists to be seen outside of Newcastle and also because it's a good opportunity for the gallery to present exhibitions outside of Newcastle as well. There are many challenges in running Gallery 139, working with various artists in group exhibitions and get, getting everyone organised and getting their working time, getting openings on time, working with deadlines with uh, advertising, uh, working on editorials too with magazines, that can be challenging. Personal challenges too were Sometimes I had to say to myself, stop working, don't do it all the time, because at the beginning I was doing it all the time, like in bed even, instead of sleeping. At yeah, two o'clock in the morning, still yeah. working. Yeah. yeah, still doing Instagram lives at two o'clock in the morning. I had to just remember that it couldn't take over my life as much as I love doing it. Um, got to find a little bit of time to to go away and put the phone phone down the close the computer. Of course there's financial challenges in paying a commercial rent. There would often be shortfalls. Things I've enjoyed about uh, running Gallery 139 is um, working with people and finding out how much people are willing to help out. I've had many volunteers that have uh, friends that have come and volunteered their time on a on a repetitive basis and I've done nothing in the gallery by myself. There's I don't think there's ever been any installation day that it's been just me. I've always had been given advice to from people that I've worked with. Other things I've learned is that I, I'm more assertive than I thought I was. There's the contradiction of She's only small, but she's very strong. I'm looking forward to the next phase of Gallery 139. I've got plans for this year for pop-up exhibitions at Newcastle Art Space, so here in Newcastle, and some more exhibitions in Sydney that will involve my gallery artists as well as artists that have exhibited with the gallery. So that's the plans for this year. So I'm looking forward to being more a gallerist now than, rather than not knowing exactly who I am. Mm -hmm.